of the world. Hello and welcome. You are tuned in. It's WKIU 94.7 The King of Rock at This is where we create unity, build relationships, and empower people. Hey guys, it's Life Lessons Live. Let's talk edition with Bishop Gerald Patterson and the crew. We are here. We're super excited to be back again today to discuss all of the good things that we've been discussing. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that good stuff? So, so <laughs> we're going to be ready to introduce the crew here momentarily, but I do want to let you know that, listen, you guys can listen to us anywhere in the world. You can log on to www.kenyanradio.net. <laughs> And you can listen to us anywhere in the world, okay? So please do not feel like because you're not in the um, headquarters of Tulum, Mississippi, that you can't listen to us because you can. And be sure to know that we also have a YouTube channel as well, and you guys can listen. And we're live on social media platforms, okay? So please share this. Tell your cousins, tell your friends, and join. Bring them on in and let's join in the conversation because we believe conversations birth new seasons. Isn't that right? Yes. And it also helps us to identify our purposes and destinies and who we're supposed to be aligned with, all other things, okay? And that's how we get better together. Uh, and listen, we want to say this too. You guys can call in. You can call in and you can share. You can um, ask questions and you can put your two cents in, as we say, okay? You can do that. You can dial 662 and you can call us and you can share. All right. And so we'd love to hear from you. With that being said, my name is Stephanie Monique right here from Tupelo, Mississippi, and I am your host. And I'm getting ready to turn it over to Bishop Gerald Patterson, who is my spiritual father. <laughs> all right. Hey, listen, we are back live in the studio and we appreciate you all for listening. And I'm excited about life. Yes. Is anybody else Me excited too. about life? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Man, Absolutely. these are the best days of our lives. Yes. We are all getting better together. We're learning, we're growing together, and uh, we're becoming wiser. And uh, that's what makes life exciting. I'm excited Absolutely. for the children. Yes. Charlotte. Yes. Because I, I'm just encouraging, you know, I'm a parent all the time, and, and I just believe that it takes a village to raise a child. That's the truth. And as we get better, the children's lives get better. Exactly. And so that's motivation to me, you know, that's motivation to me. And I, I just pray all of us can catch that, mm -hmm. you know. There's no time to be distracted and all that. So we, I don't want to get into talking because there's a lot in my heart. But uh, I want you guys to introduce yourself. But we do. We believe in conversation birth new seasons. And we're just here. This is no judgment zone. We're not being critical, but we do have critical thinking. We've got to fix some things. we got to say, hey, something's not going right because we're not getting the right results. Oh, wow. So let's dive in. Let's talk about what's not right. Let's go to the source of life. Let's go to the word of God. Let's go back to the one that created all things without him was nothing created. And let's get this thing right. Yes. Let's not be prideful. Mm -hmm. Let's not be arrogant. You know, let's not be uh, bullheaded. That's right. <laughs> you know, and yes, uh, it's got to be something bigger than yourself. That's true. And uh, so I'm encouraged and I pray that you are too. Would you guys introduce yourself, those of you that are still with us today? Hi, world. This is Miss Polk. I'm a youth advisor here in Tupelo, Mississippi. I love the crew. I am glad to be here today to just talk, yes, get involved. Good afternoon, family. My name is Anthony Dean. I'm here just, uh, just growing, being a better man, a better father, a better future husband. It's, not, it's getting good information and growing daily. Uh, like you said earlier, Bishop, these are the best days of our lives. I yeah. just want to showcase that. Yes. Uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. You know, the sum total of who we are together is more than who we are individually. And so when we understand that, respect that, and honor that, man, we can get some things done. You exactly. know, we can get some things done. So we've been talking about PTSD, post-trauma stress disorder. <laughs> you know, what, what does that look like? Where did it come from? And, and uh, all of us, listen, all of us have them to some extent, okay? Some are greater than others, but every one of us have them. So we're not being judgmental. We ain't talking about nobody, but we do have to all get better. And when we get better, life gets better, okay? The trees are not affecting us. The animals are not affecting us. We as human beings are the cause 
of the the challenges that we have in society. Yes, I okay. Agree. Absolutely. And so um, we 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 talked about some things. What 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 uh, how uh, rejection and the fear of rejection, how it uh, challenges us, the things that stem from that. Mm -hmm. We've gone over all those things. You can go back and you can listen to the broadcast. The week before last, mm -hmm. and the week before that, because we've been dealing with this for a while. Mm -hmm. And and we titled this culture because culture is a way of thinking that affects the way that we behave. Yes, sir. Until our mind gets renewed, we'll be functioning in a way, not even realizing, why do I do this? And it can become natural. It can become comfortable. It can become a way of life. And not only that, we can be build support systems. Uh, that support it. It's okay to not love one another. It's okay to to uh, dismiss someone. We, we even come up with colloquialisms. We call people toxic. We call people this, you know, we, 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 we again, we just judge one another. They mean. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, why are they angry? Have we ever stopped to consider why is this person angry? Mm -hmm. See, love goes that extra mile. It does. Mm -hmm. And so the key to us all getting healed is we got to learn how to love. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think lust is love. Mm -hmm. Lust is only after what is after. That's right. Okay. That's right. It doesn't have to do with with, with being intimate with That's somebody. Right. That's, That's right. right. I can want to be friends with someone as long as you're treating me the way I want you to treat me. I'm getting from you what you what I want to get from you. Mm -hmm. We can be friends. But when you stop giving me what I want, that's right. That's gonna do. And I desire, I desire a friend. I desire friendship. But when I'm not giving you what what you want, mm -hmm. then I we can no longer be friends. That's right. That's not love. And, and it's, it's gonna, gonna disappear. disappear. It, it'll disappear. It'll disappear. It'll disappear. And listen, right. and you can leave that that what was once a friendship, saying that this person isn't who they say they are. Mm -hmm. Maybe you had some unwarranted or unmerited expectations out of my life. Because when you really got to know me, you found out I have some traumas. Mm. I have some things and some history in my life that I begin to open up to. You begin to meet the, meet the real me. Mm -hmm. You know, who I really am. Yes, sir. All of the effects the, the, uh, of life that's, had, that's, that's happened to me. And see, that's what happens when we start uh, really begin developing relationships. But we have to have enough substance in us, the capacity to love, in order for us to really uh, be relational with one another and to help one another. The Bible says an iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. Amen. Charlotte, your life is going to help my life mm -hmm. as long as I have the capacity to love you for who you really are. That's true. That's true. And if I have enough love in me, it can also bring about healing in mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. You definitely have to believe it. And you have to align and agree. And a lot of us are not in relationships for the right reason. If we are not aligning you know, with the word of God and the things of God, then that can have a, a problem. It can be problematic. It can, it can be. be. Yeah. We yeah. have to believe, you know, and know what we're in relationships for. Most of the times we don't know. But I do agree that when we are in these relationships, we should be learning from each other. Mm -hmm. We should be respecting each other. We should be um into you know, we should be into each other. Mm -hmm. Uh because that's how relationships are birth. Mm -hmm. I think that you said something very uh important that kind of stuck with me. You talk about friendships. Right, and you're talking about a contractual obligation. Okay. Oh, wow. That would contract me. It's called, you know, if I give you something, you give me something. Right now, here's, here's the deal a lot of times we enter marriages the same way. Mm. You know, I, I love you mm -hmm. as long as you X, and you also want a little further say, Now, do you, you know, as we go in through our marriage, mm -hmm. now you know the real me, you know, the traumas I didn't know I had. So that's the difference between a covenant, right, which is not uh, an FDN statement, mm -hmm. versus a the way we well the way I saw marriage originally was uh, a contractual marriage, right? Mm -hmm. As long as she don't burn the cornbread, like you said, uh, <laughs> and, you know, oh, I'm trying, as long as I brought home the groceries and the bacon and cooked at the same time, we all good. But what happens when trauma shows up? Mm -hmm. 
what happens when I don't behave the way you uh, think I should? Do you still get love? Well, that's where we don't realize we have a, a post-traumatic stress stress disorder because you not bringing the bacon home triggered something in me. Mm -hmm. And so now, because it triggered something in me, because maybe I went through an experience in life where I went hungry. Mm -hmm. I was hung I went hungry as a child. I went hungry because of someone's wrong decision making, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. And you make an inner vow and said, I'll never be hungry again in my life. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm beginning to trust you to make sure I'm not hungry. Then the moment that you don't bring the bacon home, I, it triggers me. Mm -hmm. And so I overreact. Mm -hmm. I can become angry. I can dismiss you. Mm -hmm. I can I can even say you're no good. I can begin to say ugly things towards you. I mean, just so many things can begin to happen. And it was all from a past trauma. That was an overreaction. Yeah. And it's not something that we cannot get through. Mm -hmm. That's right. Are you understanding? Right. That's true. Yeah. But when your love isn't perfected, when it's mm -hmm. not mature, mm -hmm. when you hadn't hadn't really learned what love really looks like, where it's where it comes from. As a human being, until we are regenerated and reconnected to God, we don't have the capacity to love like we should. That's right. And we gotta get we gotta get this thing right. Mm -hmm. We are all created in his image and his likeness. How do we begin healing? First step is we got to get reconnected to God. Mm -hmm. God is love. He is love. Yes. He so loved the world, he gave his only begotten yes. son. Mm -hmm. So somebody said, well, I ain't in all that. Well, okay, that's okay. But when you experience authentic love, and then you find out how this person operates in this authentic love, I believe it will influence you to be, begin to believe that's right in God in the in, in the Son, okay, mm -hmm. and the word of God, mm -hmm. and begin practicing the things that call the couple will cause you to walk in authentic love and to experience love. Mm -hmm. Because until you get love right, you you can't give it and you can't receive that's it. That's right. That's right. Someone's that's trying to love you and you misunderstand. It. You don't appreciate it. That's that's true. You can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. And we just got to be real honest. We got to go back to truth. Many times we're trying to live life emotion, a lot mm -hmm. of emotions. That's soulless. And we can't truly get healed until our soul gets healed. That is good right there. Because the true essence of a person is their heart, the condition of their heart, mm -hmm. and the condition of their soul. Okay, the Bible says, guard That's your good. heart with all diligence, <laughs> for out of it come the issues of life. Yes, and some conversation we got to have somebody said, this, this tall cotton, this is grown folks' conversation. It is, we've got to really talk about what we may okay that's not okay. That's it. We, we really got to sit down and talk about that, you know. And, and, and that that requires vulnerability. Absolutely. That requires we got to have a safe place. Yes. To be able to do those things, mm -hmm. and we got to be honest. Do we have those places? Do I have someone that's safe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you might <laughs> even backtrack to what you just said when you was talking about. Um, your love and then you start talking about your soul for me like people gotta understand like what their soul is and like all of the work that goes into um regenerating like your spirit man is regenerated mm -hmm. like you're connected next to god but now you gotta work on saving your soul your mind your will your intellect like even the way that you think the way that you process um and i use this as, as an example I was married previously, so I was in a relationship, you know, got married, and um, I experienced inf infidelity. 
And so when I would call or text or When they don't answer the phone, you know, they're doing something they ain't got to be doing. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so now I have to retrain the way that I think or the way that I process. And so that was a that was a me thing. And so I had to get in my mind not to think bad thoughts or have to cast down vain imaginations and not think evil first. Like that's the first thing that comes to you is well, what you was doing? Why you didn't answer my car? Does it make sense what I'm it saying? Does. Mm-hmm. And so just the retraining and a reprogramming and, and a born again believer, you say it like this, you say you need your mind. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know what I'm saying? And so not so quick to think evil thoughts or not so quick to um to think bad or ill will because that's not love. You're talking about what love is and what it looks like. And sometimes we do that. You know, we uh, we uh, think something and it's not true, but then now you you self sabotage. And so many of us have done that before to where we'll think our own self out of a blessing. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, somebody has their volume on. I think we need to turn your volume completely off because we don't need no echo. I think you got a mute on your phone. Um, you, what you're describing, excuse us, y'all. We had some technical <laughs> difficulty, but <laughs> this real live, this live, time. yeah, this live, it's live for real, for real. But you know, you 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 described a behavior that comes that came from a trauma. Yeah. So now your trust has been um, destroyed. Yeah. So now you don't trust someone. Yeah. And and authentic love trusts. And when you can't trust people, you you have some trauma. That's right. And you got to be honest mm-hmm. about these things. I don't trust nobody. That's trauma. And you and you can you can avoid having to trust someone, mm-hmm. and you can call yourself healed. But what you are actually operating in is avoidance. <coughs> and those that's a a a a what do I want to say a symptom or a a fruit of a trauma, mm-hmm. avoidance. Coping mechanism. It's a coping, coping mechanism. mechanism. And and society can tell you you're healed, mm-hmm. and you're just you're being deceived. And now you can create vain imaginations. I'm good. I'm good. No, you're not, because your wealthy place is the sum total of relationships that you have. Absolutely. It's not money. It's not materialism, because you can be all by yourself and have all kind of money right. you can sit in your house yes. and now we got these internet millionaires and all that man oh, yeah. but they are so dysfunctional mm-hmm. when it comes down to people that's right so now they have all this money but they don't have any relationships and they're yet still they're depressed they're lonely they're angry they're alcoholics they're drug addicts and you know and now you have these 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 millionaires and then they're 30 and they kill themselves they commit suicide how was that 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 wasn't what god intended that wasn't you know uh gosh almighty and then i'll say this because i know we're gonna get into this too sometimes we will um misinterpret the bible and we'll try to apply scripture to justify um what we feel what we're doing or who we are for instance um you know, dad make a statement, you know, I don't trust nobody. And somebody right. say, yep, that's scripture. The, the Bible say trust no nobody man. but God. Yeah. You know, nobody but God. <laughs> and, and so, and we will apply that. And I'll tell you this is that, um, man, the way that God gets done in the earth realm, what he wants to get done is through people. Yeah. And so God has a people that he has. You know that he wants to That's align right. you with, and you know it's our our wealthy places are some total of the relationships and the people mm-hmm. that we um, are are connected to, and so we have to be relational. God is relational, yes, is. and so there's nothing in this world that we can do that we can do on our own. That doesn't require God. 
And so I think that that's important too, man. Just being in a whole place, in a healed place, in a in loving to where you're not misappropriating the scriptures. Because people will do that. You know, we'll say, well, love covers a multitude of sin. It does. Mm -hmm. But love also doesn't go out and backbite and stir up strife and talk about the sin neither. Yeah. <laughs> Old people used to say when they talk about covenant marriage, love should have brought your tail home. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, old people are talking about the song. Wait a minute, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was both. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? I mean, you know, love will cause me to be kind. Yes, sir. Yes. Love's going to cause me to be patient. Mm -hmm. And can I tell you something? Yes, sir. Many times, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're narcissistic, oh, that's and when you are traumatized, Mm -hmm. You think you being patient is you doing something good for the person you being patient with. You being patient is for you. Mm -hmm. And you become whole and That's tired right. and wanting nothing. That's right. You're letting patience have a perfect word. That person is a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. And you think you're being a blessing to them by you being patient with them. Ooh. They're there to bless you. That's right. And if you have the love right, Iron sharpens iron. Your patience with them can bring forth healing in their life, and and their challenge that you have to be patient with is bringing wholeness in your life. Absolutely. And That's see, so this, true. So but true. when when we don't renew our mind, and we're not uh, love is in our motivation, mm -hmm. and we're not healed, and we don't know how to be healed, mm -hmm. and we don't renew our mind. We will become subject to culture. That's exactly to right. To what man establishes to be a way of coping with life. And it is not God's way. Mm -mm. God's way says to pray for someone that despitefully misuse you, that does a wrong towards you. What happens when you pray is you begin to know what God thinks about that person. They lied, to you, but, the, but the reason why, why they lied, lied to you is because, because when, when they when they told the truth, they were abused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they began to use lying as a coping mechanism. Okay, I'm not telling you it's right, right? But when you seek to understand before wanting to be understood, mm -hmm. if you'll pray for them, God can enlighten your understanding. And when He enlightens your understanding. You can have patience with that person and bring them healing and deliverance from why they lie and from lying. That's good. And see, that's what we ought to be doing with one another. Yeah. Okay. We ought to be, again, the 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 instruments that God used to make this world a better place. Let's go back. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's right, he gave. He gave his son. He sent his son mm -hmm. so that we might be saved. Well, he saves us mm -hmm. so that others might be saved. That's wow. right. When you don't understand right. the purpose of him saving you, healing you, delivering you, and making you whole, mm -hmm. you will misappropriate it, the newness of life that you have because you hadn't renewed your mind to his will. You have renewed his mind to his ways. You don't think like he thinks. He's talking real good. Mm -hmm. Listen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. That requires definitely a dying. And what I mean by that when I say, you know, a dying is because you got to be responsible and you got to be accountable. Because what will happen is, is we'll say that ain't my job or that ain't my responsibility. Come on now. Or we'll leave that to, we'll say the parents should have taught them mm -hmm. at home. Or we'll say, well, they pass the that's the pastor's job, or that's you know somebody else's job. But when in actuality, we are commanded mm -hmm. to love, and that's for everybody, mm -hmm. everybody. And if your pastor's doing his job, himself, he's teaching people to love. He mm -hmm. say it's for me. She's teaching people to love. Yes. Whomever. Whoever yes. That's true. And so, and then you gotta learn to um, to gently, you know, love on people and gently, you know. Uh, say stuff or, or gently uh, correct, you know, uh, without offending. I mm -hmm. learned that from Bishop Gerald. And so, <laughs> and so, because you don't let you, we are supposed to be our brother's keepers. That's right. But we've come into this era now where we be like, that's not my business mm -hmm. or, you know, that's not my responsibility, like I said. Come on.
but traumas cause you to be selfish. I just want to say that. That's selfishness. It is. And that's not authentic love. Authentic love is not selfish. What, what is, you know, I, I think authentic you, love is not selfish. I just it's saying. not. It's giving. It's loving. It's always it's giving. Kind. It's always giving. And it's a practice. And um, and I don't mean to interrupt, but it's just a daily, like you said, a daily dying to self mm -hmm. and practicing, practicing everything in Galatians. You know, the, the, <laughs> the, the fruit of the spirit. Yes. You're constantly practicing because that makes you a better person daily. I mean, we, we don't arrive. This is all the time. You know, we, we will not arrive. And if I can't practice, if I'm not being relational with you. That's right. That's true. I can get off of my little cubby hole. I don't have to get any better. That's I can right. be mean, That's ugly, right. angry, you bitter, do. you know, whatever I want because I don't have to interact with anybody. Right. Ooh, and good. you know what else? Love is available. Love is available. It is available. God is, is it? Yes, it That's is. Right. It's supposed to be available every day. That's good. So it hits me as I was talking, I was sitting there thinking, you know, I've been a selfish saint. Oh. Right? And until you said that to God was talking about this, I thought I got delivered for myself. Mm -hmm. I thought I, you know, became, renewed my mind for what God got for who? For mm -hmm. me. You. Okay. So what happened, you just said something because of a relationship, relational to the ship, to kind of relate to other people, mm -hmm. is not just for you, it's for those you come in contact with. Right. It is. And I would tell you, we were taught to be selfish saints. If I just can eat, if I just can make it, if I can just find a way to be delivered, I won't do this to keep you. You know, I won't go to hell. Mm -hmm. But there's people out there looking for you, and if, you know, we're gonna be witnesses. It's true, but that that comes from lack of relationship. Yeah. And the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing, mm -hmm. and pray you one for another. If you're praying, God will correct your selfishness. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about religious prayers. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about selfish prayers. I'm talking about because prayer is a dialogue between God and his covenant people. Prayer is shut up, sit down, and be quiet. And listen. And if you listen long enough, then you have something to converse with God about. Many times we're trying to tell God all of our issues and all of that. And, and at some point, when you mature enough, when you get enough word, he'll tell you, like, uh, you don't think I do that? <laughs> I don't know. He talks to me like that. He talks to me like that. You know, where, where you get that from? Mm -hmm. You know, but when you just, like a child, and you just jibber jabber, and I know we think because we go into these deep, long prayers, but you mean it. Yeah. And you mean to tell me you've been praying to God for the last four hours and he didn't tell you you were mean? That's right. So you never be quiet to listen. Mm -hmm. And the key to accepting good counsel is the ability to listen. Wow. And when we can't listen, matter of fact, we can't even be any good to one another until we master listen. That's right. That's the truth. Wow. That is the truth. And listen, listening is not listening to respond. Because sometimes we think we know what to say and how to fix people, but only God knows how to fix his creation. Right. And we need the wonderful counselor, the person of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's the answer right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he can give us a word of knowledge. Yes, sir. Wow. The Holy Spirit can tell you this person feels this way and behaves this way yes. because of what happened to them when they was four years old and they 44. Yes. And no one ever dealt with it. They suppressed it. And it was a trauma. Wow. Childhood hurts. Oh yeah. Unhealed hurts, unmet needs and unresolved issues is the challenge of all of society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And G, God sent his son to heal us and to make us whole. But we've got to know how to experience that healing. And our soul, you know, James 1 and 21 says, 
lay apart all filthiness and all superfluity, which is abundance or superiority or preference, uh, your self gain and all those things. Lay all those things. Get rid of the residue. Yeah. Mm, get rid of get rid of wickedness. Nah. <laughs> and receive with meekness, with meekness, the engrafted word, the engrafted word, okay, the written word. We won't even take heed and say, God, you're the source of life. You're the one that gave life. So we're going to go back to the one who gave life and created life to find out how you intended for us to live life. When we won't read the word and hide the word in our heart. We have a wicked heart. Mm. And I don't care how good you think you are. Because usually our good only is only good when it benefits us. That's yep. true. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's true. And it's really manipulative. It is. They're a good person. They're good to people that they want something from. Yeah, you're right about it. You're helping us. Yes, this. you're right about it. <laughs> but if you cross them, mm -hmm. watch out that night. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> they say, I got one more good cussing. <laughs> got one more. <laughs> <laughs> and so take the engrafted word, yes, which is able to save your soul. Yeah. That's it right there. That's it. And until it gets into your heart, which is spirit. Yeah. It begins to bring your place to your soul. Your mind gets renewed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your will. Now, I am going to pray for someone that does something wrong for me because I'm going to sit my will to his will. I have to confess Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. I have to, to submit to his teaching. Yeah. That's the only way I'm going to be come transform. That's the only way I'm going to become who God intended for me to become. If I submit my will, your mind, your will and emotions is a book of that. Yes. Okay. And, and how you feel is affected by what has happened to you. And until we create wholesome environments that we can love one another as we should, we don't have we gotta we gotta create good experiences with people. If all of your experiences have been bad when it comes to people, whether it be in a friendship, whether it be in a marriage, you know, you've been married five times and every one of them were bad. So now you be like, I'm done with marriage. Da, 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 da. Well, you married the wrong people, or maybe they they married the wrong person. You ain't who you think you are. But see, that's so hard for us to swallow when we think that we are in a place that we're really not. But listen, the Bible also says that <laughs> when we look at ourselves, we're it's looking good. like a man looking in a mirror. Mm -hmm. that's right. You still comparing yourself to yourself. That's right. That's so You're comparing yourself to the people you hang with. Mm -hmm. Right. Birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. Ain't that how I go? Birds it of a feather flock together. You, you, you hit it. You Are you what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so you in a circle, mm -hmm. a culture, yeah, where people are traumatized. So you make trauma normal. That's right. And then you develop coping mechanisms to live how you want to live, even if it goes against what God wants. That's right. Even if it's not pleasing to God, mm -hmm. even if it's not the way we're supposed to behave, and they'll make you us teaching this on Sunday. Mm -hmm. They'll call you a boss B when you are a narcissist. Right. You're mean. It's you, sad. You, 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 and, and they'll prop you up sad. on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And you can hold hold conferences to teach others how to be a boss B. Right. And they'll pay to come like it's a bad to day. learn the wrong way right. of living. Right. All right. because you got Gucci, you got some money, come you got now. some notoriety, you got those things. What should the profit of man to gain the whole world mm. and to lose their soul? You don't even know your soul's in trouble because you're looking at man and not looking in the word. That's right. Wow. That's right. So now the mirror, we can make ourselves look good in a mirror because we're measuring ourselves against ourselves. 
And we're supposed to be measuring ourselves against the, the word, word of God. Mm -hmm. Because that's who we created in the image and likeness of. Mm -hmm. It's God. That's what helped me, Stephanie. Yes, sir. When that light came on in me, and I found out yes. it delivered me from a whole lot of things. Man, yes, I used yes. to smoke Salem's like it wouldn't know. And I said, I, I read in, in the word of God, I created his image and his likeness. Yes. Then the Holy Spirit got involved and said, if I wanted you to smoke, I'd have gave you a chimney. My God. Ooh. Now, that's what he said to me. <laughs> that's what he said to me. That was a rhyme yeah. word for me. Yeah. I ain't judging nobody. That's, that's you right. and God. Are you understand? That's, that's what right. he said to me. You know what it did? It delivered me. Come on. Conviction. Yeah. And you know what? And when I just went through my physical, ain't no cancer in my Praise body. Praise God. So Praise good. God. Teach real good. Oh, goodness. Praise I mean, God. right on the side of the pack, the Holy Ghost even had me read the side of the pack. The yes. Surgeon General says, yes. if you. Yes. It's like, I'm going to be stuck on stupid or what? Come on. Teach. It's, so hmm? it's not. It's not, you know, hard. It's called submitting. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's not until you your spirit gets regenerated and you begin to come into another um, uh, environment, yeah. his presence. Mm -hmm. The word is his presence. Yeah. And so when I when I got out creating his image, his likeness, I started reading how God was. I started finding, I started reading the book of Proverbs, I started reading the gospels. I said, oh my. Who I'm angry at, I'm supposed to be praying for. And then that didn't come automatic, Charlotte. I had to say, God, help me to do that. That's right. Yeah. And this moment I came on agreement with what I was what I saw God was desiring and what He had intended for us to be, grace showed up. Praise God. Mm. He told me what I needed mm -hmm. to order. The, I needed the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And so then I begin to desire to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Come on, because I need my helper. <laughs> Every day. Are, are you understanding? Yes. And mm. see, when we can, as the body of Christ, because we love people, get all the religious jargon out of it. That's good. Let's That's become good. so caring and so compassionate and so empathetic with people that we can teach and share and live the life that's been afforded to us through Christ, that it begins to heal people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's because if we'll stay in his presence, his presence will cause people to be healed. Yes. 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 Dan, you said a word a few minutes ago. You said submit. Yeah. Submitting to the word, mm -hmm. submitting to this process. Because we're talking about what it looks like to be healed and how you, you know, um, embrace that process of, mm -hmm. of walking on that journey and, and, and it's a lifetime thing um, but oh, their yeah. words sometimes can be triggers for people too and so just hearing that word submit somebody be like no because I ain't weak I'm uh, not going to submit okay. and so and, and, and that's a what we say post traumatic stress disorder. That's PSCD right there. PTSD. There we go. <laughs> the ABCs. That's right. <laughs> yes, that's right. Because when when you hear certain words and it caught and it brings up an emotion in you, right there you gotta say, God, that's a what trouble. is that? Yeah. God, unlock that, unpack that. So and I'm telling you what I had to do. Mm -hmm. This is what helped me. So certain things would trigger me, or um, you know, certain feelings would come. I would say I was over people or I was delivered from people or I was healed from whatever they done to me. But then when I would see them in the city or pass okay. by, like I would deliberately go the other way so that I wouldn't have to speak. <laughs> and I said, God, why do I do that? And I'm a people person. Yeah, I love people. You are. It's like you can hear me go, hey, you know, 10 miles away, you know. And so I said, God, why do I do that with them? And the Lord told me, he said, you offended. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I forgave. I ain't offended. Mm -hmm. But if your action is 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 completely different from what you're saying, you gotta inspect that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And so I think that we gotta pay attention yeah. to how we react mm -hmm. and the things that come up. And if you don't, if you don't allow yourself to be washed with the washing of the water of the word, 
and allow the word to heal you, Holy Spirit to heal you. What happens is we have vain imaginations. We will justify our behavior. Oh, absolutely. And listen, and because that is only the law of attraction is you attract what you are, not what you want. What happens is, is you will attract offended people. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's right. And that culture of people, that group of people you hang out with justifies you remaining in an offended place. That's right. Yes. They and then make it okay because they're offended too. Yes. And so now y'all sharing trauma stories. Yeah. Girl, let me tell you what happened no. to me too. Come yeah. on. Mm -hmm. It's what I did. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then it began, then I think they they are able to manipulate the whole conversation between, you know, the people that are having this offense and the one that's quiet They're like, what's wrong with you? Well, I don't relate. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and you find yourself having to exit out of those offended conversations. Mm -hmm. So I love what we're talking about because yeah. one thing about it is that you can either stay there or you can exit. And sometimes we have to just exit and say, oh, wow. I'm okay. healed. You know, I, I can't go back and forth. Come I can't. On, I know he can jump on it. <laughs> can, can we insert? Because we got to have this is conversations for new season. Yes, can we insert? Are we really talking about being offended? Yes. Because we got to help people think. Mm -hmm. Because remember, culture is a way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. Okay. That affects our actions. Yeah. And so. We got to, we got to, we got to sometimes drop a question in there to allow us to think about what we're saying, and how we're behaving. That gives the opportunity for the word to be sown, for the Holy Spirit to minister. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and for our brother and sister, because we're supposed to love our brothers. That's the human race, all yes. of mankind. And when our love <laughs> is where it needs to be, our capacity is there, we will begin to, to tell the truth in love. Mm -hmm. We won't be silent because silence is agreement and tolerance is acceptance. Society is the way it is today because we've been silent and we've accepted things. We must develop our faith Aurelia said trauma bonds. Yes, Aurelia. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we, we, we've got to make sure because faith working by love and love working by faith. Yeah. We must know what we need to be doing in order to operate and to allow love to change the world, love to change lives. I must continuously develop my faith. I need more faith for for the walk of life that I'm in now than I did when I was a baby Christian. Oh God, yes. When when I when I wasn't a believer, you know, I'm called to the bishopric. I have to love unconditionally some of the same people that that sabotage you, mm -hmm. the same people that 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 uh, assassinate, uh, assassinate your character. Your character. Mm -hmm. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? Come on. And yes. so the grace and the faith, but the scripture says in First Peter, I think it's two and and first Peter two somewhere. And it talks about where when we grow in the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace abounds towards us. Okay. And so it may be Second Peter one. I'm agreeing. Okay, but but I have to know that. But if I'm not reading my Bible, I never learn that. I never grasp that. I never know that's what I need to be given attention to. Mm -hmm. You know, I must be built up in my most holy faith. You know, I, I need to go from faith to faith, so that we can see more of God's glory. You don't need to see me. See, sometimes we want to be seen. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about, you know, attracting attention to yourself. But we get out of the selfishness of even needing that attention. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're really hid behind the cross. Uh, that's right. 
the work of the cross mm -hmm. can do the work in people's lives. But when love hasn't been perfected, it hasn't been matured in us, we'll make it about us. That's right. When the people that the love in us should heal. That's right. We hurt. It's listen, true. it's like marriage, covenant marriage, man. It listen, so when you come to the altar, y'all about to get married. Yes, right. Y'all coming to cut covenant and to die. Yes, you got to die to self now mm -hmm. yep. in order for covenant marriage to glorify God. Because that's the purpose of covenant marriage, to glorify God. Yes. It's not about you anymore. Mm -hmm. This is to reveal the covenant relationship between God and his church. That's it. Come on now. That's this it. is about presenting his bride without spot or wrinkle. This is about the husband being able to wash his bride with the washing of the water of the word. Mm, mm, mm. Come on now. Yes. That she right. be without blemish. Oh Glory God. to God. Yes. So when you see the blemish, you can't be offended. Mm, mm. Come on now. Mm, 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 mm. Because if Christ got offended with us, he right. got off that cross. Oh, yeah. We never went. Come on now. Yeah. You that said if you lose your life, you'll find it. Oh, my God. Mm. Dad, you said something earlier. And I want to just kind of go back to it. You were saying that it requires more faith of you now than ever before, right? And then you went further and said that your love has to be even more. Uh, expanded. It, I'm asking you this: Does it take a lot of faith to love? Is love and faith interchangeable? Well, well, he um, he working on comment over there, but oh, your faith works by love. Okay, explain, expound this a little bit if you don't care. Do your you faith mean? works by love. Mm -hmm. So you can't have faith in something you don't love. What do y'all think? No, wait, wait. Uh, the the question, scripture says faith works by love. That's it. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Yeah. All right. And love works by faith. So they're interchangeable. Or if it take one of them. Okay. If if you don't listen, first of all, love comes from God. Mm -hmm. And if you believe in the source of love, you cannot have love. There you go. Okay. And you won't submit to love. You want to allow love to to you can't receive it and you can't give it. Mm -hmm. You got to believe in the source. And you probably wonder why I asked that question, right? Because you got people who don't even know what love is because they don't have faith in God first. Right. Is that true? I can't show you love. I don't believe in God, right? Is that true? Well, we, we've got a description. John 4 says that let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God mm -hmm. and knoweth God. There it is. So, yes. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. First John 4, 7 and 8. God proved his love for us. It was manifested in him sending his son. Mm -hmm. That was his love towards us. Mm -hmm. So love is action. Love is a force. Yes. Okay. And we do have to define. First Corinthians 13 defines love for us. That's good. One thing is it's patient. Mm-hmm. It is kind, okay, and and again we'll we we'll, we we'll bypass some things, and we again because of culture we will think because I'm being patient with you is for you, mm -hmm. when me being patient with you is for me, because now patience is having her perfect That's work right. in me, mm -hmm. it's maturing love, it's perfecting love in me, mm -hmm. okay. Now, because of the covenant keeping God. When we operate in that love, which is patience, love is patient, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Love heals, love brings deliverance, okay? Mm -hmm. Jesus came out of love, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, and the salvation, he's the savior of the world. He brought forth healing, deliverance, preservation, protection, okay? A forgiveness of sin, mm -hmm. he brought all of that. So when we operate in this agape love, this love that comes from God, the source of love, it brings forth healing, deliverance, uh, 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 forgiveness, okay, restoration, oh, yes. preservation in people. Long suffering. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And and so th this is what real ministry looks like. Mm -hmm. We've made it about the 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 um, 
I can't think of the word for it now. Prosperity? Help me out, Stephanie. No, I don't think it's prosperity. No, we're more, we're more, we're more, we're more in tune with the choir singing and the in the in the in the in the in the, in the the pageantry of the church mm -hmm. and we are the work of the ministry. Yes. So we, we worship pageantry. Man, we got to have everything just right. Now, love might not be right, but boy, we got to have the right colors on. Yes. You got to have the right, the right clothes on. We got to do the right sequence. Wow. We got to have it on the right day. I mean, we into the days, you know, so this is this is this, this day and this is that day mm -hmm. and all those things. Now, love ain't right, but boy, we got them days right. Mm -hmm. Boy, we got the, the, those sacraments right. Boy, we got all this right. Love ain't right. Wow. And so now we've embraced religion. Yeah. Wow. And listen, some things are timeless and some things are timely. I'm not talking against the sacraments of the church. Absolutely not. Yeah. But we have to put first things first. Yeah. We got to get this love thing right. Jesus told his disciples in, in Matthew, uh, what is that? Matthew 20, 28. I forget, boy. He's telling them about Matthew 22, 36. Uh -huh. He told them to love God, and I'm paraphrasing, and to love people. If we get those two things right, all the other instructions hang on them two things. Mm -hmm. If we don't have those two things right, none of the other things that we're doing mm -hmm. really don't matter. And so we got we got to just be mature as a body of Christ. Stop what we're doing. And make sure we put emphasis back on loving one another. The scripture says, it. how it. should you know that you are my disciples? It's by the love that you show one mm -hmm. towards another. That's right. And he knew that was going to be the hardest one to show. Yeah. But we and cannot do an absent it. relationship with God. That's we cannot right. do it absent the person of the Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts. That's right. Okay. okay. That's work. Because, because the first fruit of the spirit is love. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so we have people that argue with us about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But you mean, dude. You are unforgiving. You hold grudges. That's it. Oh, Bishop. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you you gonna you're gonna argue with me about something the Bible says because of doctrine? Yes. Mm-hmm. Because of, of, of your experience or lack of experience. I remember when Kenneth Hagin said that he was a child and he was sickness, sick and under death. And, and, and he was reading in the word of God. He's talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost and things. And so he began going to the people that he grew up around. Yeah. And he began asking them about what's this thing the Bible is talking about the Holy Spirit, you know, and these types of things. And, and they said, oh, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm not quoting him verbatim. He says, oh, you know, we don't do that, you know, da, da, da. He was about to die. Mm -hmm. If he didn't receive healing from God, he was dead as a young man, as a child, teenager. Mm -hmm. So he says, I don't need to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so he went and found someone that believed what the Bible says. That's right. See, the word of God is the infallible truth of God. Now, it's either going to be infallible or it's not. If it's going to be conditional, it's going to be because of what you believe or what I believe. And I was saying, no, 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 no. He, he exhausts his word above his name. Yeah. And so, now, loving me, we got to have those types of conversations. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. And it's okay if you don't ever believe it, but you will not benefit. Right. You want from that. from the quality of life that we could have and should offer to someone else. You know, listen, it challenges me, guys, to see people who, Lord have mercy, are suffering needlessly. Mm -hmm. I don't like to see a marriage that's not authentic. Yeah. 
You can see it in people's eyes. Mm. Mm. When that wife isn't authentically loved. Wow. And she's just playing a part of the role. Wow. We don't think children pick up on that. Mm. They do. They do. Yes. And let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what, what children will do. Children will make an inner vow because of the way we behave, because we were irresponsible with one of the most powerful sacraments of the church that's covenant marriage. We were irresponsible with it. And now your daughter is saying, I ain't gonna never get married. Mm -hmm. Little pause. That's right. Because of that's the way true. you as a father treated her mom. Mm -hmm. Or she says, oh, I know I'm in tall cotton now. Yes. Or she says, I'll never allow a man to treat me that way. Mm -hmm. So now she can't be submissive to a husband. Mm. Oh, that's true. Wow. Come on. Bring Traumas. <laughs> Traumas. Yes. Now, now I know we're getting into we're getting into some tall cotton. And yeah. vice versa too. Oh, it goes, it goes. It goes oh, always. A lot of times we see it from the females, but it's also me inside too. Yes, we yeah. got a lot of men saying, I never get married because I somehow my mother treated my father okay. yeah. back and forth. But a lot of times we talk about it from the you know from that yeah, kind yeah of there's right. abuse of women just yes. like there's abuse yeah. of men. Right. You know, and I don't want to make it a generalist thing. You're so right. Yes, yes. You're, you're so right. True. Yes, and right. I even want to go back to where you were because that's the thing. And I'll tell you this: the other side to that is that you will reject or throw off covenant marriage between a man and a woman completely, and you will say, "I'll never be involved in that type of relationship." And so now the extreme is that you don't want a man at all. That's right. Yeah. Now you go the other way. Now, and it opens yourself up to that deception. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because of a trauma. Yes. Because you experience that. God, we are out of time. My oh, God. Really? Yes. <laughs> out of time. We're out of time. That was awesome. But we, we, we said those used to be my words. Mm. Amen. 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 My wow. God, thank you for sharing. And so there, there's just Hearts are broken. Mm -hmm. They are. Hearts are broken. And we got to talk. We really do, Stephanie. We got to talk. Mm -hmm. And we're not being facetious. We're not being critical. We're not shoving stuff under the rug because when I see young people oh, that are not embracing the life that God afforded them, mm -hmm. you know, the whole school center teaches alternative life. What do you mean alternative life? Right. There's no alternative to a life that God has prescribed. That's right. There's no alternative. Mm -hmm. And so it's a culture shock. Mm -hmm. And until we get the culture of the kingdom, mm -hmm. mankind will not thrive. And there will be anger. There will be bitterness. Mm -hmm. There will be drugs, suicide, oh my God. all types of things going on in this world that don't have to be had. That's right. Amen. We got to go. That's our time. We love you all. Yes. Thank you all for listening. Yes. Thank you all for sharing. And uh, please uh, share this with someone. It will be uh, out on our Facebook page as well as on the YouTube channel. And uh, comment, send us an email. Um, you don't want to comment on Facebook, send us an email. We'll get it. And uh, I promise you it's confidential. And, and uh, we're going to talk about some things. Yes. So we're going to continue some more. I love you all. Have an amazing, amazing night, week, month, year. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good. Amen. <laughs> and we are healing. We're getting better. I want to leave this last thing. Stephanie has, has a, a ministry called uh, Hugs. What, what Free, you call hugs. It? Free Hugs. Free mm -hmm. Hugs. Listen, the Holy Spirit just shared with me. Guys, hug somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hug somebody you love. There's healing in hugging. Yes, it is. I believe. There's yes, healing. There's healing in that, okay? Yes. Hug somebody. It also does something for you, okay? So love you all. God bless you. We're gone. Amen. Until Amen. next time. Thank <laughs> you.